I've been doing this show for two years and I do not see any reason to rehearse. Yeah, well, it's not for you, it's for me. I'm trying to work out some interesting shots for the new crane camera, so uh, if you just bear with me. Uh, oh, where's my floor manager? I called this rehearsal for 12.30. Calm down, calm down. All right, we, uh, we come from the station symbol, right? We mix through to the title, the John Harley Show, right? And I come to a high shot of you. I zoom in for the opening and... Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready, yes. Um, uh, 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 welcome to the etc, um, etc. Et the John Harley Show, right? Then I come to a high shot on the crane over here. Well, don't you think you ought to be on me if I'm talking? Yeah, well, I'm on you. I'm on you with four over here, you see? So... Uh, well, don't click at me. Well, um, intro. Um, this week we have... Um, well, who do we have this week? Don't you ever read the script? I don't have to. It's on the auto cue. Yeah, from the world of entertainment. Uh, from the world of entertainment. Names that you will never forget. I don't seem to have a list here. Cut the sliding door. We'll make one up. Huey Green. High shot. Zoom. Activate. Next. Miss World. High shot. Zoom. Activate. Next. Harold Wilson. High shot. Zoom. Activate. <laughs> Next. Sooty. Ah, uh, we've more chance of getting him. I'm sorry I'm late. Yeah, so am I. Activate. What was that? No, it's certainly not sooty. Well, no, don't walk in the wet paint. I'll go around and get security and get in by the fire exit. Yeah, well, just, uh, just relax, John. We've got visitors. Well, come on, hurry up. I'm doing the rest I can. Well, it's Robert. He's been stabbed. He's dead. Hello, and welcome to another Who Done It. And to solve the sudden death of Sir Robert, head of a TV company, is our resident panel of experts, uh, Miss Anushka Hempel. We're very glad to see Anushka back after being ill last week. And Mr. Patrick Mower. <laughs> and to help them, we've invited Miss Rosemary Leach. <laughs> and Mr. Jimmy Jewell. Now, as usual, we've selected from our studio audience four hopeful Sherlock Holmeses. <laughs> so let's see how they and you at home fare against the brilliant deductive prowess of our panel. As we rejoin the action at the TV studios, where there is now a vacancy on the board. It's the uh, managing director, I'm afraid, Inspector. Yes, he's dead. He was stabbed with a, a prop dagger. <laughs> no, no, not a pop dagger, a prop dagger from the property department. Yeah. yeah no, actually, it's from the publicity department. It's an ornate Arabian dagger that we're using to publicize a new series of Sinbad that we've just bought. Yes. Oh, the dagger's used a lot in the present. Uh, no, no, I won't move it, no, of course. Now, I've got everyone connected with the program in the studio. I'll keep them there till you arrive. Yeah, I'm Bridges, head of security. You, made a, you may remember me last week from the robbery we had. I see. Well, thank you, Inspector. Quarter of an hour, then. The police are on their way. <laughs> Don't let anyone else in till I say. Right, uh, you all know what's happened, do you? Yes, yes, 
Yes, I need you. a drink. Uh, I, uh, you must all stay here in the studio. That's police orders. <coughs> I can't understand is how he got over there without there being any mark or footprint on all this fresh wet paint. Uh, leave it to the police. No, I'm in charge until they arrive. All right, you can let them in now. And I want to know the moment the police get here. Somebody tell us what's going on. Look, just sit down here somewhere until I tell you different, will you? Who do you think you are? You've got you... no authority over us? I have been in contact with the police, and I want everyone connected with this programme in this studio here when they arrive. And let's see who is everyone now. You're... You're Roy Sharp, are you? Camera number one, senior operative. That's right. You're enjoying this, aren't you? If you'd like to think so. May I go to the bar, please? No, sir, you must stay right here. Looks like a strike meeting. <laughs> it's a strike of sorts, I imagine. Someone has just struck the managing director down with a knife. Good God. What? Uh, is he dead? Oh, yes, he's quite dead. Let's see if everyone... You're, um... You're Lynn Knight from the wardrobe. That's right, but I was only in the studio for a few minutes just to look at John's Mr. Harley's suit. Look, you are on the schedule. That's all that matters. You're uh, Tony Belden, number two camera. Right. And you're Peter Green, the floor manager. Yes, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, look, ask as many as you like when the police arrive, but until then, just shut up. You will are you? a very nasty man, and I am going to report you to equity. Much good may that do you, sir. Look, if you are the floor manager, you must know the timings of everything that happens in the studio. Well, yes, of course I do. Well, what are the, the painting and the uh, scenery schedules? Well, I've got a list here. Yes? The scenery would have arrived at about 9. It would have been uh, set and painted by 10.30. Then there was a coffee break. The floor was painted at 11. It should have been finished by 11.30. It takes yeah. uh, six hours to dry. The set would have been ready to yeah. be lit at 5. We don't need all that. Look, at uh, half past 10, the scenery was there, and this wasn't due to be painted until 11. That yeah. leaves between half past 10 and 11 for the murder to have taken place and the body to be put over there. I should tell you all, I think, that when I arrived here, there was no mark or footprint on any of this fresh, wet paint. Any other way in you see is through that door over there, fire door, which is locked. And I, myself, the only one to have a key to it. Are you confessing to murder, Mr Bridges? Oh, please, just relax, Mr Harley. Have another go at your hip flask, if you so desire. I suppose you're going to want to know where we all were between half past ten and eleven. What a dramatic idea. No wonder you're still in light entertainment, sir. Well, perhaps we should begin with Mr Harley. <laughs> or do you need a cue card to remember, sir? No, I remember with crystal clarity. Now, I'm sure you're all aware of the rumours going about the studio as to the dropping of my programme. Well, I went to see the managing director about this at 10 o'clock this morning. Ah, John. Morning, sir. Nice to see you. Come in. I can't offer you a coffee, I'm afraid. My secretary's got the morning off. Can I have a drink? Oh, no, it is a bit early, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> well, sit down, old boy. Sit down. What can I do for you? Sir Robert, you and I have been friends for a good many years now, and I feel that I can put my questions to you quite straight. Mm -hmm. um, are you thinking of dropping my show from your schedules? Or is it perhaps me that you're concerned about? Fifteen years under contract to this studio is a long run. Oh, don't be silly, you're still in the top ten. Now, why on earth shall I think of dropping the show, our only show which has been a success week after week for the past two years? Where did you get that ridiculous idea? Well, the option in my contract is up for renewal, and there are rumours going about the studio, you know. Now, you listen to me. We've been friends for a great many years. Now, if it weren't so, I would be very angry with you for listening to these stupid rumours. Now, I'm going to chuck you out of here. Come on, get you back to work, making some more top-rating programmes for us. <laughs> I see. And what time did you leave? Um, 10.20. And did the managing director give you a big kiss before you left? And what is that supposed to mean? It means, sir, that I was in the outer office of the managing director this morning, about 10 past 10, and I heard an entirely different version. Fifteen years under contract to this studio is a long run. Now, John, we've known each other for a good many years, and I think it's fair to say that for the last ten at least, you've made a jolly good living. All I'm saying is that now is the time to quit. Now, oh, surely you must have put a bit by. No, I haven't. I've lived well, but so has the tax man. And as you very well know, both my former wives were financial leeches. I've lost a lot of blood. Well, I'd have to go to another studio to get a transfusion. We're not renewing. Oh, damn it, Sir Robert. We're meant to be friends. Now, there are times, John, when a friend in need is indeed a pain in the posterior. Look, give me a chance. A chance? I told you a year ago to stop drinking. 
and wasting valuable studio time, which is money. But you wouldn't listen, would you? And I was too soft to do anything about it. Well, now we can't afford any more of it. Now, you've got to realise that unless I have your letter of retirement on my desk by this afternoon, I shall cancel the remainder of your series. And that's your last word? My last word. Very well, then. I shall sue you for every single penny you've got, and then we shall see who has the last word. I can tell you already what it'll be. Goodbye. You are a liar, Mr. Bridges, which makes you a very, very nasty man. That may be because I don't like murderers, sir. <laughs> Welcome back. And if I look a trifle worried, it's because Who Done It is getting rather close to home with a murder in a TV studio, and it's this one. Well, who killed the managing director? Was it the fading TV personality, John Harley, who was about to be made redundant? Or Dennis Rogers, his director? Some of the camera angles that he was working out showed a distinct lack of feeling. Could it have been the disappearing floor manager? Or Lynn, the wardrobe mistress? What about Tony or Roy, the camera operators? It would be interesting to know what time they arrived at the studio. Security man James Bridges knows the crime must have been done before 10.30 because after that the floor was painted and there are no footprints on the wet paint to indicate that the body was placed in position after 10.30. Now while our panel puzzle it out, let's rejoin the action as Bridges continues to question the unhappy Mr. Harley about his last meeting with the victim. I've already told you it was about 10.20, just before Sir Robert left to watch an episode of that Sinbad film, or whatever it was. Ah, Sinbad, was it, Mr. Harley? Yes, it was. How do you know the name of that film? Well, everybody knew the studio had just bought it. It cost a fortune. They've been advertising it on the air for weeks That now. may well be, Mr. Harley. There's no reason that that should have been the film that the managing director had arranged to see in private this morning. You followed him into the viewing room, didn't you? Go on, admit it. Yes, I did. I followed him into the viewing room. Sir Robert, if you just give me another series. Will you please go away? I've said all I'm going to. I promise you I won't touch another drop. No, it's not just a drink, and you know it. Now get out. And then I left him. Alive, Mr. Harley? Did you kill him, Mr. Harley? It is true that the managing director did have an appointment to see a film in the viewing room this morning at half past ten. As you know, that viewing room is right next door to the studio. And the room was ready, it was darkened, and the button was pushed for the film to start, which it did. But was it the managing director who pushed that button? As you all know, there was a robbery from the wages department from these studios last week, which £30,000 was taken. I am convinced that money has not left these premises. I know it's still here, and I think this may be connected with it. If you're thinking of between 10.30 and 11, then you know very well that Tony arrived me at 11.30. I gave him a lift in my car. Come on! Open up for the workers! Come on, the workers! Hey, it's a pity you can't afford an expensive car like this, mate. Never mind. With that missing 30,000, perhaps you soon will. Is this, sir? Uh, is this camera on? Well, the camera isn't, but there's power to the crane. Move it, will you? What for? I don't want to move. Just move it! Mr. Green, why were you late in the studio this morning? I had to go to the wardrobe. I'm afraid I got a stain on my jacket. Would you believe paint? I was in the studio at 10 o'clock. I went to Studio 2 to check the captions for tonight's show. 
As I leant across the table, my jacket brushed against a paint can, I remember noticing it was just 10 o'clock and that wardrobe would be on duty by then. So I left to try and get some of this rubbish off my jacket. I see, and can you confirm this, Miss Knight? Yes, it's true. It was just after 10. The last time I did this was when you got that dancer's body makeup all over your shirt. My God, what a memory. I told you I bumped into her in the dark. What a memory. Jealous. What, of you? Yes. Give over. Oh, we'll never get it off. Is that a threat or a promise? So that's why I can never find you? Well, you only have to shout. You're the director of the show. What was the time when you couldn't find Mr. Green? Not till after 12.30. Could I see that jacket, Mr. Green? Yes, of course. You can still smell the cleaning fluid on it. Here. Well, you can't tell me. It took two hours to clean this. Nobody said it did. Peter came in just after 10. I cleaned the jacket. As he wasn't needed for rehearsal till 12.30, he stayed. We listened to the radio and had some coffee. Down your way, wasn't it? Yes, Radio 4. I left just after Desert Island Disc started. What a crushy little job. Time for a little cuddle, eh? What else did you two lovebirds do? Don't try being sarcastic with me, you creep. Just because you're sex-starved and have to walk into girls' dressing rooms without knocking. And don't tell me that you don't, because I get all the complaints. Oh. Oh, sorry, miss. Oh, you're in the altogether, miss. I am... Um, I'm looking for a missing purse. Leave that. You're pathetic. You couldn't get one of those girls, even if you were a millionaire. I suppose £30,000 could be a down payment upon something. Look, I don't intend to enter into a slanging match, and I should warn you all that there are witnesses here to this defamation to my character. Is that not so, Mr Rogers? I didn't hear anything against Mr Bridges, did you? St uh, no, not a word. How about you, Tom? No, a dicky bird. Oh, you're all being very clever, aren't you? No, we're just very bored listening to you. Oh, I'm not. I'm following every word with interest. Some of the questions are more interesting than the answers. Pray continue, temporary detective Bridges. So, uh, you say that uh, Mr Green didn't enter the tomb until 12.30? Yeah, that's when I arrived to check some shots on the crane with the two cameramen. Oh, Roy, I'd, uh, I'd like to look at some shots from the crane. All right, hop on then. OK, take me up. I want to see some high shots. Right, I'll unlock it. <sighs> What the hell's going on? I nearly went through the roof. Sorry, it seems to be out of balance. So I've been mucking around with it. Now, what was on here before me, an elephant? Yeah, I'll have to die it. Look, we'll bring it down. I'll take some weights off and we'll adjust it, all right? Come on. Yeah, well, don't bother now. You go grab some coffee. I'll go over some words with John. And then Mr Hartley turned up. That camera be moved about today? Not until you had it moved. Look, it seems to me that there's only one person who disliked Sir Robert enough to stick a dagger into him. I agree with you. Police are here. Ah. Mr. Harley, I think it was you that killed the managing director in order to prevent your contract being cancelled. I think you followed him into the viewing room. I think you stabbed him and I think you dragged the body in here and hid it behind the scenery about 10.55 before the painters got back. Nasty people must, I suppose, have nasty minds. But you're wrong, Bridges, because you see, I know who did it. I know why and I know how. And now the police have arrived. I will be able to tell them everything. And then I will watch your face, you nasty little man. <laughs> Well, while our panel are trying to look over each other's shoulders to see who's got the best clues, let's welcome our suspects. OK, panel, is there any part of the play that you'd like played back? Rosemary, what would you like to see again? Uh, I think I'd like to see the moment when the cameramen readjust the camera for, for Mr Bridges, please. Right. The Jimmy crane Jewel. thing. Yes, the crane, sure. Jimmy? Uh, the, the part where uh, the managing director, no, no, John Handley, mm -hmm. first comes into the studio and sits behind the desk and uh, 
they lift the doors up where the man is discovered. Revealed. Revealed. Right. Nushka. I'd like to see the second time we see the body. Mm -hmm. When you see the dagger in it and Mr. Bridges or somebody unlocking the door. All in lovely green. Thank you. Yeah. Bloodhound, what about you? Yes, sir. I'd like to see the bit where um, our temporary detective, Mr. Bridges, as he's described, comes into the studio after he's been rebuffed on the phone, please. Very well, and so you shall, sir. Good. Well, whilst we're looking for those, Rosemary, would you like to start off with some questions? Um, <coughs> yes. Um, Mr. Bridges. Ah, very conscientious. But can you tell me, you were awfully busy finding out where everybody else was, um, but you didn't explain what were you doing in the managing director's outer office at ten past ten? Oh, I had an awful lot of business to do there. So we had some cameras that were operating outside the uh, security area. This was interfering with the whole running of the studio, and I wanted to make sure that he had given his permission for this to happen. I wasn't able to get in to see him, of course, because... Um, now, I noticed you didn't knock. Oh, no, no, you no, made no. quite a noise when you shut the door, so you obviously were there on some legitimate purpose. Oh, very, very, very legitimate. <laughs> see, he is completely legitimate. Jimmy. Uh, yes, the... Uh, Miss Knight, uh, Mr. Peter Green, the uh, floor manager and the wardrobe mistress. I'd like to know what they were doing for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is to answer that question. <laughs> what do you think they were doing? You're still Go ahead and ask. I would like to know what you were doing for two hours, locked in a... Or if you were locked, I say, take it you were locked in the wardrobe room uh, for two hours, all that time, waiting before you went on the floor. Well, uh, what would you be doing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, at my age, that's a leading question. <laughs> uh, Anushka. But you disappeared, like, out the camera when he kissed you. Is that why they call you a floor manager? Anushka, yes, a question. I'd like to ask Dennis Rogers, um, what would happen to you, and what happens to you if, um, well, what's going to happen to you now? that uh, Mr. Harley's show is not going to go on anymore. What, what are your prospects? I presume that uh, that will also cancel my contract since I was just contracted for the length of uh, the John Harley show. I see. Thank you very much. Very important. Yes, I'd like to ask uh, the fading TV personality, John Harley. Uh, what sort of show, chat show, was it exactly? I mean, was it like um, the things we have, like Russell Harty show? Um, Russell who? <laughs> 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 Russell Parkinson. Sorry, Navi. <laughs> Russell Parkinson. No, can I just ask you another question? Um, if we are to believe, one of, one, either you or Mr. Bridges must have been telling the truth about your show as to whether when you were telling the, the, the managing director that it was, uh, your story was that it was a successful show, and Mr. Bridges said that it was a, the, the argument, well, there was an argument about the show being taken off the air. Um, yeah. Was it which one of you would be telling the truth, do you think? I don't know. I've completely lost the flow of what you're asking me. All I can <laughs> say is that for some extraordinary reason I've been fired from this... Are um, you admit, then, that that was uh, what happened, in fact? Yeah, I'm, uh, yes. Um, the, uh, the one where I, he says whatever he does say, I can't remember now, is anything. But um, whatever it was he did say, that's not true. But the one where I, I am you fired is the true one. Up. Yes, I am now, I am now, uh, well, <coughs> unemployed. Yes, I'm sorry, there I must stop you. Thank you very much indeed for that e very erudite reply. Thanks. Uh, we're ready for the first playback. <laughs> this is Jimmy Jules. Oh. Uh, you wanted to see when the TV director and John Harley are rehearsing and first discover Sir Robert's body. Yeah. Watch the monitor. Thanks. Sooty. Ah, uh, we've more chance of getting him. I'm sorry I'm late. Yeah, so am I. Activate! What was that? Well, it's certainly not sooty. <laughs> well, no, don't walk in the wet paint. I'll go around and get security and get in by the fire exit. 
I'm Thank sure you. that is tremendous help to you, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, it was, yes. Right, who I'm no, no wiser. <laughs> <laughs> you want to ask any questions appertaining to that? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, the, uh, Mr... Uh, the TV director, Dennis Rogers, uh, what do you actually think of the show as a chat show? Uh, you want my frank opinion? Yeah. It's rubbish. What do you mean it's rubbish? You couldn't bloody direct traffic, mate. <laughs> Don't fight, boys. And I have another act. thing to say to you. You're fired as well as I am. Precisely. Can I ask the, the star a question? <laughs> yes, please. How sir. long has the show been on the air? Two years. Is it, has it been in the ratings? In the ratings? Look, my show has been in the top five for the last two years. Funny, I've never seen it. <laughs> I know why you haven't seen it, because you haven't bought your television license, sweetie. <laughs> Patrick. Yes, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Mr. Bridges just a question about the, uh, the, the, um, the props and things like that. You said in, the, in the, your chat to that guy about the... it was a prop dagger. Um, do you handle it? Have you, did you actually know what sort of dagger it was? I mean, what I want to really want to know is, could the dagger have killed the fella? Oh, yes, it was a, it's a real dagger. It but was it a real, real dagger. dagger that was used in a television studio, so I called it a prop dagger. And the dagger that was found in the body was the prop dagger? Oh, yes, it was, yes. I did make a slight mistake. It came from the publicity department, of course. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. We're ready now for the next playback. This is yours, Anushka. You asked to see the security man Bridges unlocking the back door to reveal Sir Robert's body for the second time. Here it comes. Well, come on, hurry up. I'm doing the best I can. Well, it's Sir Robert. He's been stabbed. He's dead. <coughs> yes, he's dead. <laughs> ah, yes. you, you never seem to be helped by all I'm these not, I'm not. I get in such a muddle <laughs> on the show, I can't tell you. Patrick gets it right, <laughs> straight off, and I'm like... Yeah, you've done Ugh. handsomely over the past. Oh. Would well, you want to well, ask a question about it, or do you want to wade in? I'll yes, I want to ask the body where it was dragged from to get it in through the... <laughs> 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 through the little green right, room there. Right, will the body stand so. up, please? <laughs> no, we can't do that, I'm afraid. Um, Yes, I, I want to ask Peter Green something, actually, not, not mm -hmm. pertaining to that particularly, or maybe it is, but I want to know, do you have a set of keys, being the floor manager and everything? Uh, Mr. Bridges said he only had, he had the key to the fire door, but do you have another set of keys at all that you can get in and out when the studio's locked up? Are you usually first in and sort of... No. You're not? No, you have to actually get the keys for any door from the security. So you've got to go and sign for it? Yes. And check. Did you sign for your key that? No, because I came in after the scenery. The oh, scenery arrived right. at 9 and I didn't actually arrive till 10. So in that's fact, right. they would have already been signed out. I see. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anushka. We're now ready for the third playback, Patrick's. Are you asked for the part where Bridges finishes his phone conversation with the police and goes back into the studio? Yes. I see. Well, thank you, Inspector. A quarter of an hour, then. The police are on their way. <coughs> No, 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 no. It's a high set, it? Don't let anyone else in till I say. Right. It was there. You don't know what I was looking at, do you? Uh, Not me, Patrick. Yes. Can I just ask Mr. Bridges another question yes. appertaining to that? Uh, you said later on that you, uh, this robbery, I'm very interested in this robbery, you said that you believe that the money was in the building somewhere. Why, why would you believe that it was still in, in, the, in the studio? Well, uh, you could call it a hunch, but I had in fact been working on the investigation to that robbery for all of last week, and it was clear to me that there was no way that money could have been taken out. Yeah. It has never been discovered, that money. Why? You don't seem to like your personality very much. Surely that your jobs, all of your jobs, tend to d d depend on whether the show is a success, doesn't it? I mean, yours included. Why, why, why did you not like uh, your star? Well, I don't know if you have any experience of television studios, Mr. Moore, but it's often very, very difficult to keep in any sort of human contact with uh, actors. 
He's, oh, very difficult. He seems a rather nice, charming sort of fellow to me. I mean, well, no doubt in private, but. Uh, <laughs> can I? He wasn't very charming to you just now. I thought he was singularly insolent. No, no, no. He was talking. No, through, the, the drink to was me. talking. The drink was talking. <laughs> can I just ask our, our director a question? Yes. Um, uh, he, uh, your, our star. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting his name. John Harley. I've never heard of him. You it's see. written up there. You oh see. yes, so John Harley. He's right in front of his billing. He obviously we saw him drinking a lot. Was he professional in his job? I mean, did he fluff on on front camera and things? You know. No, I think that's always one of the problems. Actually, with somebody who has a, a problem with alcohol, is that if they continue to do their job with enough competency, of course, they feel no need to give it up. Did he drink during the show? He did not drink during the show. No. Oh, okay. Thank you, Patrick. Here we come now for the last playback. This is Rosemary's. You very astutely asked for the moment when Bridges asks the cameraman to move their crane camera. Is this, uh, is this camera on? Well, the camera isn't, but there's power to the crane. Move it, will you? What for? I don't want to move Just it. Just move it! Green. Oh. Hmm. No, 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 no. It is yes, oh, you it have has. It? Yes, it, it is confirmed, something. Oh, As it says, um, one sort of small point of information, Mr. Bridges. If that was a fire door, why was it locked? Oh, it is always locked. It is not used for the ordinary running of the uh, studio. It is only used when there's an audience in. It's fire regulations that when an audience in, there must be an extra fire door. That door is always locked. You don't locked. usually lose keys on fire doors. You have those things, you know, don't you? No, I think this was an emergency fire door that was only used when an audience was actually in residence, as it were. Mm. You don't seem very convinced. Yes. No, you just worry me because you were smoking as well. I don't think you're even a security man. Momentary aberration, the cigarette. Momentary aberration. Patrick. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask our star, John Harley, a question. Uh, you mentioned about <coughs> the fact that you had two wives and you described them as being leeches. Um, so uh, there is sort of a reason that you might need, say, the thirty thousand pounds. What would you have done with it if you had, let's suppose? If, if I had thirty thousand pounds, yeah. well, I'd make quite sure that Sir Robert had an agreeable funeral. <laughs> <laughs> On that note of charm, I must, I must stop. You know, I'm afraid we must stop now. Uh, so I'd like you, panel, to write down who you thought did it and how many clues that you spotted. Where you I go? Oh, yes, God. Um. This, of course, applies to our audience <laughs> panel as well. Let's see if you can do better than the so-called experts. Okay, here we go. John, yeah. I just want to ask one more question, please. All right, just one short one. From the number one cameraman, Mr. Ro Roy Sharp. Why didn't you uh, adjust the camera crane after you'd last used it? Uh, I wasn't the last to use it. I mean, it's usually set locked down with the camera on the bottom. Somebody but, else had a guess. Surely, that. if you're the number one cameraman, you would, if you were on the run through, you would have used it. And there's nobody bigger than you in the studio, too. Oh, there is. Oh, there is. Oh, the there guy is. who used it yesterday. Oh. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I shall now come and see how you're getting on. You won't be able to read this at all. Oh, I'll It's manage. one long clue. One long I shall long manage. I shall manage. Clue. Thank you, Jimmy. Noosh. Oh, okay. Thank you. Madness. Oh, Patrick. Look what he's done. I didn't know he cared. Just me. Thank you. Isn't that nice? How very charming of him. Thank you, Patrick. Probably the young lady that sent it to you will kill me for that. Good. Right, let's first of all see if we have a winner from our studio audience. A definite no. And another no. And another no. Now, here's a funny thing. Here we have somebody who's gotten her first clue exactly the way that it was done, but has put down the wrong name. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, Mary Hardy uh, from Hull in Yorks, because it's the last one, we'll give you the prize. Congratulations. <laughs> Mary Hardy. And uh, here is your trophy, which I will be happy to present to you later. Congratulations, Mary. Right. You, over there, how are you doing? Who done it, Rosemary, and why? 
I think I think it could only have been uh, the two cameramen because of the crane business. They're the only people who would have the know-how to adjust it because of the Sir Robert's flower thing. I thought it was Patrick's actually at first, <laughs> jammed in the thing. So obviously they moved the body uh, from wherever it was across the floor on the on the place where the camera should be, yeah. and his flower dropped out. But why he didn't adjust it afterwards, having gone to all that trouble, I don't know. So it could possibly be the director who forgot. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, 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 She's been goodbye. looking at my card. <laughs> no, I was going to say exactly the same thing. Good, OK, you've said it. I think the cameraman number one and number two, they're the only two that knew how to work the camera, and it took two men who knew how to operate and put him on the camera across the wet bed. Thank you. Anushka. Do you know something? I think they're absolutely right, but to give it a bit of interest, I've picked on Dennis Rogers and Peter Green. They did the robbery. Yeah. They got caught by Sir Robert in the viewing room or something like that, in yes. that little green room, did him in, dragged him in, sort of put him on the operator, threw him over the top there to get over the wet paint to make it look as if it was done a bit earlier. Right. How about that? Patrick. Quite right. It's not you, those two, oh. I'm afraid. <laughs> it's Roy Sharp, the sharp operator, and his mate, and they did it because they, the weight of the camera was wrong, it had the body on it, the rose was on this side, right. there was no footprints on the why? paint. And uh, what else? Oh, yes, the new car, they probably did the robbery, and the managing director probably found out. Right, so thanks very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. That's what you think, is it? <laughs> yeah. And they were trying Anushka. to plant it on Mr. Bruce. Oh, Anushka. <laughs> Wait, dear Anushka. Is she right? Is she the only one? Wait one I'm moment. Wrong. Will the real who done it reveal himself or themselves, please? What? They all did it! <laughs> You're joking? Yes, gentlemen. Oh. Ah. Why is that? <laughs> Well done, Rosemary. Well done, Jimmy. Oh, Marvellous. <laughs> well done, Anushka. Why create a precedent? Oh, well done, wow. Patrick. <laughs> the two cameramen stole the £30,000 and hid it in the studio two days earlier. Now, that morning at 12 o'clock, they decided to take the money and put it in the boot of their car. The managing director surprised them in Studio 2 in the act of uncovering the money. Roy Sharp grabs the prop dabber, dagger and stabs the managing director. OK, now, John, bring it forward. They know that the floor has been painted uh, so they, they counterbalance the arm of the camera crane to swing the body over the wet paint, dropping it onto the floor behind the sliding panel. Uh, they are confident that no one will go near until the paint is dry, which will give them time to get the money out by car. <laughs> we'll also establish a false alibi, since it will look as if the murder was committed between 10.30 and 11. Now, Roy Sharp says that only one person disliked the victim, victim enough to stick a dagger into him. Well, how did you know it was a dagger? Bridges had only referred to the weapon as a knife, and the body was hidden behind the panel. So nobody, yes. other than the murderer, could have known. Well, that's the last who done it in the present series. From your hundreds of letters, it's obviously been very popular, particularly at Pentonville and Dartmoor. <laughs> uh, thank you very much to our guest panelists this week, Rosemary Leach, and to you, you. Jimmy Jewell. <laughs> yeah. and, and a very fond farewell to my favorite crystal ball gazer, Anushka Hempel. Yeah. And a special congratulation to Patrick Bloodhound Mower, who out of ten shows actually got seven dead right. Oh. Well done, Patrick. Oh! So, now it's uh, good night from me until the next time, and I'll leave you with a puzzle. A man lives on the 25th floor of a block of flats. Now, every morning he gets in the lift, he presses the ground floor button, he goes down, he gets out, he goes to work, and he gets home and he gets in the lift, he presses the 12th floor button, and he walks the other 13 floors. Why? Good night. Keep watching. <laughs>